Okay, so without further ado, um, allow me to introduce you guys to our top expert, Yan Ling Leng. Uh, she is a bridge engineer with vast experience um, and specializes in bridge design, load rating, and forensic analysis. Before joining Clark Engineering, she was a teaching assistant and a research assistant at New Mexico State University and an adjunct researcher at the Research Institute of Highway Ministry and Transportation in China. Her research focused on developing refined safety evaluations, procedures for highway bridges. Um, her proposed approaches show promise for refining the current load rating code for highway bridges and provide applicable procedures for risk analysis and failure analysis for bridge structures. She also has helped, she has also helped with uh, writing the code in China as well uh, for rating and service structures. Um, okay, so I'm gonna give Yan Ling the presentation mode, uh, but before I do that, I do want to take a second to ask you guys a couple of questions. So if you could please uh, just submit um, a poll that you should see on your page right now. Okay, it looks like most of you have answered, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. Okay, and then just one more, guys, just bear with me. Okay. All right. So I'm going to close out this uh, poll and we're going to get started. So give me one second. Let me just give Yenling the presenter mode. Okay. Yenling, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. You should be able to present your screen now. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yep, perfect. If you want, um, just put it in like presenter mode so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. Presenter mode. Mm. Like uh, if you go up to the top, you can present the PPT as a full presentation. So that way it takes up the majority of the screen. How about now? Uh, no, I can still see the the PPT mode. Um, if you go to the top left corner, uh, mm -hmm. there should be an option for you to present. I think it's like the very last icon. Okay. Um, 
on the top left. How about now? Uh, no, not yet. Not um, yet. No, maybe just if you go to, uh, I think view on the top, maybe. View on the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where it says view, right next to help. Yes. If you click on that, you should be able to present. It should give you an option. Uh, is it working now? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. do, you, so do you see where it says uh, animation at the top? Animation. On, on the PPT slide, right next to it, it says slideshow. Yeah. Okay, click on slideshow. Oh, I'm, I'm using multiple screens. Yeah, oh, I, I see, I see. Yeah, I think you're, it might not be clicking on the right screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's probably why. <laughs> okay, let me see. Yeah, I have a Three screens, I. Eh? Oh, okay. I don't know which one. <laughs> gotcha. Yanling, uh, go to sharing tab of the go to webinar tool, mm -hmm. and you're able to see an option to choose a different monitor. It'll blink to show you what monitor is showing. Okay. So if you go to the huge play button. Now we see there the we uh, yeah. Now we see a different one. We see the presenter mode, not the full slides. So okay. I recommend you trying another one. Another one? Yep. Nope. No. Not this one. There we go. Yeah. That one. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nuti. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining the workshop. Uh, today I'm sharing my experience on modeling of the soil strength interaction of an integral abutment bridge reported on drill shafts. Uh, so, oh, I try to, yeah. So, uh, soil strength interaction is very complex. Now, I, ha I haven't studied it in depth. And, and I'm not an expert in it. However, I think we bridge engineers, we do not need to comment the complex soil structure interaction theories. I think we just need to know how to obtain some numbers, you know, either from foundation report or published cases or research yeah, to run structure analysis. Uh, so in this presentation, um, just sharing some experience, you know, how I considered SSI in the design of a joint knees bridge. Uh, this presentation is more like a case study. You know, some criteria uh, or viewpoints I, I used in this project, maybe case specific or like state state specific. So mm, now our, uh, it wouldn't be comprehensive or like uh, universal, yeah. So, and then at the end of the presentation, I'll try to answer questions. So the bridge um, I'm presenting uh, has an integral abutment uh, and each, each abutment is uh, supported by a single row of HP 12 by 53 pi piles. And um, it has a joint knees bent supported by drill shafts. Uh, in this presentation, I'll briefly introduce in some fundamentals of the soil strength interaction for integral abutment and the drill shafts. And then I'll introduce uh, the design methodologies 
you know, the simplified methods and the more sophisticated methods. And then I'll um, uh, introduce, I'll, I'll talk about the, yeah, the bridge, this specific bridge design project. I'll talk about the, uh, the information of the bridge and, uh, and the, the information of the model. Mm. So and and the, when I show you the model I built, um, I I'll focus on you know, tell you how some numbers associated with the SSI were determined. I think in, as I said before, um, we bridge engineers probably just want to collect some numbers and run the, the model. So I guess you know how to obtain the numbers would it be of interest to you. Mm. Yeah, as we know, the for integral abutment bridge, the integral abutments are used to eliminate the expansion joints at the end of a bridge. And the bridge snap is a cast uh, monolithically with the bottom and diaphragms. So it has a minimum maintenance requirements and the cost effective. Uh, in many states, uh, integral abutment is regarded as the first option. Mm. But then, as we know, the main concern for integral abutment is the thermal effect. Uh, in, the, in the summer, the expansion of the deck would cause the compaction of the backfill and lead to the rotation of the abutment and causing passive earth pressure. Uh, while in the winter, the contraction of the deck will cause the abutment to rotate towards the, the deck and may lead to the slide of the soil behind the, the abutment. Um, yeah, as the pretty deck and the supporting abutments are integrated without um, any joints of, um, or expansion um, joints or bearings. So the deformation of the, the snap, um, the substructure you know, must be observed by the flexibility of the abutment and the pioneers. So in this sense, uh, we desire the flexibility of the piles to be greater. And the piles um, at the bottom end can accommodate a large movement. Yeah, so for, for this consideration, um, so integral for integral bottom end, uh, we need to use a single row of piles. And um, for um, in South Dakota, for example, the, um, the state requires the, the pinings oriented that the, the weak axis of the pinings is parallel to the center line of the abutment. Uh, and the objective is to maximum the horizontal and rotational flexibility of the pile head. Mm. Uh, South Dakota has the extensive experience using integral bottom end bridge. And uh, for, this, um, for this bridge, so the bottom end details mm, you know, complement with um, uh, the standard integral, integral bottom end details mm, for concrete snow bridge in South Dakota. Uh, the second soil strategy interaction feature of this bridge is the drill shafts. You know, drill shafts have, have some unique advantages. Uh, at, um, normally, the, the, the DOT or owner, other owner agencies they require that the drill shafts to, um, to be socketed into rock so they can effectively carry large lateral and vertical loads. And secondly, the drill shafts 
stand up to the most demanding environment conditions. You know, they have a high resistance to scour and um, they do not um, need a comfort then for construction. Yeah, so in the case where scour is a critical issue or comfort then is not uh, feasible, so just as may be a, a solution. Um, you know, in South Dakota, the steel pilings are the most common type of deep foundation for the bridge. Um, I think in the past three years, uh, I have designed two bridges supported by drill shafts in South Dakota. And the main reasons for have, having selected drill shafts were to cope with the scour issue or, or difficulty with comfort and construction. And this plan shows the, the bent and the drill shaft um, details. So you, you, you can see that it has an integral uh, bent, there are no bearings, no, no joints. Uh, and uh, the drill shaft is, is a direct extension of the bridge column. Um, I know this is not a very common. I know in many states, they require the drill shafts to be uh, larger than the, than the column. Yeah, but this is a state that specifies the requirement. And also for this project, it has a permanent, permanent casing and uh, also required um, the drill shaft to be socketed into rock and it has uh, it reinforced uh, over the full height. So for the design methods, uh, for for um, integral abutment, the um, the concept of a integral abutment bridge is, is based on the assumption that you know, due to the flexibility of the piles, uh, thermal stresses are transferred to the substructure by bridge the connection, and um, particularly uh, so the the uniform temperature change caused caused the um, abutment to transmit without the location. So the, the so in this sense, the concrete abutment is considered as a rigid mass. Or rigid beam, and the soil structure interaction is neglected, mm. and so normally they don't consider like a second nose as the integral abutment, like the supposed or expected to observe near these forces. So only dead node, nav node, and uh, horizontal earth pressure considered in the design of the um, abutment. It, uh, this method uh, is uh, applicable to most situations. Mm. And, uh, and, the, the, uh, and also, since the relative stiffness of the integral abutment is much less than that of the superstructure, so the superstructure can be assumed to behave like a a symphony supported structure. Um, but this um, but this method has some limitations. So so for integral abutment, um, they have a, a limitation for the maximum skew and the the maximum bridge length. Now for but it, this um, the limitation also makes mostly data specified. So, so when the when the skew of the the bridge like is greater than thirty degree or thirty five degree, or the moment greater than two inch or the other limit. So in this case, soil structure interaction is warranted. 
And in this case, you need to consider all those mega transferred from the superstructure. In the a, a, a structure, a soil striking direction analysis also can provide the displacement result for the structure. Uh, for for drill shafts, so um, a simplified method for the um, design or analysis for drill shaft you know, can be done by modeling the shaft um, as a column of some length and, and which is fixed at the base. Uh, so often, often we refer it as a point of a fixity. So um, this concept can be used uh, very effectively for preliminary design. Um, but the, the, this concept itself um, maybe kind of um, uh, can cause a misunderstanding. Uh, so the point of a fixity derived from the equivalent cantilever beam method. So basically um, for this simplified method or called uh, equivalent cantilever beam model. So um, the shaft the shaft beam, uh, which it would support to use nonlinear springs to model the soil resistance along the length, uh, it's, it's um, replaced by a simple equivalent linear system you know, com you know, composed of uh, a freestanding cantilever beam, you know, which is fixed at the base. Uh, this this method is um, largely empirical and is based on observed past performance. I I do not have a first-hand materials to comment on this method. Yeah, some studies said that um, you know this design practice you know has been used by many states. Uh, it it normally needs to a safer design. But sometimes maybe too conservative. Uh, because the the maximum bending moment it does not necessarily occur at a point below the grade. So so this the simplified method now uh, it is simply an approximation to estimate in the, the maximum bending moments in the shaft you know, for for so for preliminary design to survive, but um, you know, in the real world, there's really no such thing as a point of fixity. Um, even though this method has some limitations, um, but uh, yeah, however, it's, so it, it's a it's a simple first estimate of the maximum bending moments in the column, and uh, it provides a good um, start a point for more sophisticated design. Uh, so in, in, in South Dakota state, so normally the point of a fixity is provided in the foundation report for drill shafts. So above the fixity point, a design is a column, and um, below the fixity point, the drill shaft um, design for axial nodes only, and the, the end bearing of the shafts are conservatively ignored. So for the for the refined method, so uh, here is the here is the, the screenshot of the design procedure for drill drill shaft from the drill shaft manual published by Federal Highway. So basically the design of a drift shaft is an iterative solution. Uh, so the first step is to establish the minimum diameter and the depth of the column, uh, which can be done by using the simplified method I, I taught a, a moment ago. Mm. Then we need to build um, 
model to consider the soil's shaft interaction and to determine the design depth of the shaft based on limit, uh, strength limit stage and some displacement um, limitations. And then the displacement um, limitations you know, are normally state specified. Maybe every state have different um, criteria. Uh, generally, but it's not it's not universally. In most cases, a tolerable um, like a horizontal deflection is you know, 0.5 inch. Um, but if um, if you if you are doing soil structure interaction on the the drill shafts, I think the first you need to determine the accept the, uh, the acceptable criteria or standard for the deflection of the structure. I know Arizona DOT has published a, a design example for drill shaft and using this method. Uh, so for this, um, for the refined method, you normally need to build a more sophisticated model. Is re required to do the analysis? No, um, yeah, this can be done by my dad. Uh, now for the for the case study, the bridge I'm presenting today um, is located in Roberts County, South Dakota. Uh, it was built a couple months ago. The total bridge length is 126 feet, and the bridge width uh, 32 feet 8 inch. Uh, it's a joint lease bridge, you no know, bearings. It has an integral abutment um, drill shaft. So um, we designed the bridge substructure using the simplified method uh, company with the South Dakota um, practice. Uh, and I checked that using the refined analysis uh, using my data label. And uh, by the way, um, so South Dakota DOT demands independent design is a design check for bridge for bridge design. So um, for the model I I used the RC snap bridge wizard to create the, the superstructure model. And then I defined the abutment, the pilings, bend cup, and sh shafts in the boundary conditions like manually. Um, so I I used the 3D spin element for piles and the drill shafts. And um, I defined the abutment as a shell. Uh, now I'm um, showing you the model I built. Hi, Lucy, can you see, um, see the model? Or maybe I need to. No, I think you're going to have to drag over the uh, the soft. Yeah, there you go. Now I can see it. OK, good. Perfect. <laughs> yes. So as I said in the very beginning, uh, I think in, in this model demonstration, I would just focus on how to obtain and the plug in some numbers for the soil structure interaction analysis. Yeah, in my desk, um, we don't have to define the, the soil stream parameters. So um, basically, we just need to plug in the soil information, like um, the soil type, um, loose or dense weight, et cetera. And, uh, in the, in, and, the for, uh, and the, for the MEDAS, the, the model, there's, an, there's no such thing like a point of fixity. So we can see the real behavior of them, of, of the whole structure. Uh, and for, so for, for this bridge, um, has, an, uh, has an integral abutment and the pilings and the shafts. So I defined the, um, 
the use a soil sprint method to define the boundary condition of the abutment, the pines and the shafts. So uh, so basically uh, we can you hear the boundary. We see there is a integral but an integral um, bridge. Uh, by the way, there are different there are different um, have methods to define you know, the, the, the soil spring, but I just use them um, this one. Um, so for here, um, first I, de I define the bottom in a spring. Um, here I, I define the, the boundary group here, the integral bottom end. For the bottom in a um, spring, So after I select uh, the element, so now we need to define like, the, um, the bottom and the height, the bottom and the waist, the deck um, length, also the void uh, the void ratio of the back um, the the back fail, uh, the specific uh, gravity. Like a cycle factor, and also the uh, the thermal expansion. So for for our for this bridge, uh, the bridge height and the abutment height uh, is six six feet, and the abutment width two feet, and the deck length is one twenty six, and for the void ratio, if I use the um, uh, granular and the material, so it's 0.2. And for the uh, for this uh, specific gravity and the cycle factors, I, I just use a default number. And here defined uh, um, the differential deck temperature and also the material. If I'm use the 40 Fahrenheit, they use the uh, then you click like open eye. Yeah, since I already def defined uh, mm, the model, so I, I'm not going to open it for now. So for for the pilings, for the steel pile, I also use the the integral uh, bridge spring support. Uh, and let's use a pile spring. So here you need to define uh, the soil type, the ground level, the power diameter, and the unit weight of the soil, uh, the earth pressure coefficient, and at rest KO, and the coefficient of subgrade reaction, also the friction angle, and also the initial uh, soil modular as is either loose, medium, or dense. So how I, uh, or where did I get this number? So here we go back to the presentation. So he, here is the, um, the subsurface investigation. Uh, this is, um, uh, Provided by the geotech engineer. Okay. So you know for this for this bridge, you see here uh, this bottom entry number one, this bottom entry number four, and uh, here is the. Um, see. I don't know whether you can see my mouse, but here, but it, so here is the the bottom of the abutment, and it has the four uh, soil layers. So it has a se about a seven feet, um, the black salt clay, and, the, and then um, about a seven feet sand and gravel, and then um, maybe about a six feet dark brown uh, salt clay. And uh, and below that would be uh, like all 
the dark dark uh, excuse me dark clay. So this is their four soil layers. In the in the model, we needed to to define the, the four layers. For example, this the, the first soil layer. Uh, it, it's kind of uh, beef clay and the ground level is zero. The, the pile diameter since my pile is um, HP 12 by 53, the pile diameter is one feet. And the unit weight you need the waste, I think, uh, also. And here, um, here is another part of the foundation report. And for for this site, you see here, the basically it has provided the uh, the soil property, the soil parameters for the, each soil layer. So for the uh, for the silt clay, uh, the one hundred and fifteen pcf is the unit weight, and uh, the fired angle uh, twenty eight degree. So here. The unit weight of the soil, we put in a point, uh, point 0.116. And the earth pressure coefficient, I think we use the there's an equation from the LFRD. Um, so the K, KO equals one minus phi in phi. So this is the phi is 28. So we use the equation, okay, maybe we get a, a number. So one minus sine 28.53, so we're here 53. Then for the coefficient of a subgrade reaction, so I, I uh, didn't get the number from the foundation report. I, I got from, um, here is a published um, uh, case. And here, here they said for each different soil, they have a, a KP. So for, for, um, for our case, it's, um, it's kind of the clay and it's moist, but it's dense. So I used um, 382. Yeah, so this for, for the first layer. And uh, And so the second layer, uh, sand and gravel. For this, then we, we, then we, after we select the element, so we come, come back here and choose the, the sand. So this is from ground level. Uh, to be in the seven and the power diameter one feet and the unit of weight uh, and earth um, 
the KO, we can use the same the same way. So that the initial uh, density we choose dense, and then we go back to the PowerPoint to get uh, the um, the number from the the soil report. Well, so uh, for sand and gravel, the fine is 32 degree, and the unit weight 100. And the 16 PCF. And the four here for the sand. And from this table, you be you choose 336.6 KCF. So here, um, So here one one minus sine thirty two B point forty seven here uh six hundred and thirty six point six PCF and so the the angle would be thirty two and here this this sent after we input this data we use click up nine. So you know, we use the same method to define the other two layers, uh, two, two soil layers for abutment one. And uh, for abutment four, we also use the same method. And for, for drill shafts, so for drill shaft, I, I took um, a shortcut because I just um, because I mentioned so since the in um, our foundation report so the foundation report um I, we got you know for the drill shaft it also uh, already told me the point of fixity and also the you know, the, the um uh, the again friction of the pi uh, of the shaft. So using this data, we can get uh, the maximum moment of the corner, and, um, mm, and also we can estimate the length of the shafts. And also because you know we need to do independent design and design check, and normally we need to use the more conservative number to you know, to do the design so i didn't do the iterative analysis so normally you have to to do a iter iter iterative analysis to determine the length of the gel shafts but here i just you know i i estimate the length of the shaft using the simplified method so i when i created the model i just so the the next I for the gel shaft is using it in front the defined method. Uh, and here for the for the gel shaft, you know, here basically have two only have two uh, soil layers. So the the first soil layer is sand gravel, and the second is dark. Uh, gray clay. So I I use the same method. So for for shot, I also use the the pile uh, spring to define the soil spring of the piles. And um, I. Also, I use the same method as I just um, demonstrated for the, the panels to define the, um, the soil property uh, around uh, for the for the panels, uh, for the shafts. And here, uh, 
here from the see the boundary. So for the in integral abutment, it's going to use the uh, so by default it use the mm, the compression uh, tension the kind of variant and for the pinings and shaft also by default it use the multi-linear soil springs. So I, I, as I said, I, I took a shortcut because I didn't, I didn't uh, uh, did the, um, it didn't use an iterative method to determine the drill shaft, but uh, you know, but you need to, you're um, required or you're, you want to do a more rigid analysis for drill shaft. So normally you need to do some training here. You need to, uh, first you need to try off, um, like a define, like propose a length for the drill shaft, and then you do the run the analysis, and then you check um, the strength and the um, uh, the movement of the shaft. Um, and uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, the Arizona DOT on their website, they published an um, uh, example, and that example, you know, very and uh, uh, illustrate the, the process in detail. Yeah, you, you can refer to that example if you're interested. And here after, um, so this model is a complete, so I show you um, the deformation. For example, for an under uh, temperature node. So here is the, the deformed shape of the, um, the whole structure. It is for um, when we have a temperature rise of 40 uh, Fabry height, it's a deformation of the, the whole structure. And if you want to know the uh, displacement of the drill shaft, So for the drill shaft, it's about um, 0.1 inch. Yeah, so the, normally the, the, the limit for the, the movement of a drill shaft is normally 0.5 inch. So you can see that this design uh, is relatively conservative. Yeah, because the, the length of the drill shaft is determined by a simplified method. So, is kind of a um, conservative, but it complies with um, you know the the state um, practice. So we still use the these links. But if we, uh, but we if we do the design using and like um, strictly complying with the soil structure analysis, probably we can use a, a shorter drill, drill shaft. So basically, this the this the information, yeah, or this the how I defined the soil structure interaction for the for this bridge. I mean, um, and then also this uh, the end of my presentation. Uh, so if you have uh, any question here, I'll, I, I'll try to answer it. And also, if you uh, have some questions or concerns and you want to reach out to me, uh, you're very welcome to send me an email. And I thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Yanling. I know a lot of our engineers have a couple of questions for you. So let me just pull up the screen. 
Um, okay. Uh, before I get started, I did just have one more poll for you guys. It'll be super, super quick. <clears throat> you should be able to see it right now. Um, it'll just be, oh, maybe not. Hold on. Okay, now you should be able to see it. Uh, it'll just be 30 seconds, so super quick. It looks like some people are having issues. Let me stop presenting. Give me one second. Um. Hmm. Sorry guys, just some technical difficulties. Oh. All right, I'm just gonna skip over this one for now because it seems it's not really working. So I'm just gonna go straight to the questions. Um, okay, so with the questions on board, I'll get started. So Yen Ling, oh, hold on. Hold on, sorry guys. Okay, question number one, uh, we have from Varun. Um, what is the cycle factor? So can you share the screen with me, please? Yes, <laughs> Can course. I see? Yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So yeah, uh, question number one is, what is the cycle factor? So for uh, um, for cycle factor is um, now I, I use the default number with the, the, the value two. So uh, uh, for my understanding, since the the thermal effect for the for the bridge, you know, in the it is said in the summer because it will cause passive earth pressure like behind the bridge abutment because the extension of the um, deck and then in the winter it costs maybe uh, maybe cause the soil slide um, behind the abutment because of the contraction of the deck so it's like um, so it's like a, it is either cyclic either, um, issue but for, for here for the, um, for the design process, process we uh, if we don't have any um, more data uh, to you know, to consider the cyclic model or like similar you know, to fatigue, you know, we just use the default number. It's my understanding, you know. The, you, um, but if you can Lucy or you have a better answer. Yeah. Um, I do not. <laughs> I think okay. that was pretty clear. Um, if you guys still have some questions on that, feel free to add any additional questions, but we're going to move on to the second uh, question mm -hmm. from Dong Wang. Um, so the second question is, is the spoil spring in Midas Civil a one-way spring? Does the spring have different stiffness for active and passive lateral pressure? Uh, it's not a one-way spring. I think for the, for the, for the, for the abutment, basically, I think they use like a compression kind of spring. Yeah, and, but for the uh, for the pilings, you make a multi-linear spring. Uh, so it, I think it's, it's not one way. One way, I think it, it means one direction. And, um, and also for 
mm. they said that the screen had a different DP. For mm. well, active and passive matter, I think yes. I think the yeah, I think the it does have a different stiffness for the active and the passive matter protein. Okay. So, all right, perfect. So then the next question is, I believe the abutment width should be the same as the bridge width, but she mentioned just two feet. Would you please let me know how this is? Mm. Yeah, I, from my understanding, the abutment width is the width of the abutment. And, um, or, or do you have a clarification? this one, Lucy? Uh, no, but I'm not sure if maybe Angela might. Angela, mm -hmm. Oh, Angela, you muted. Yes, uh, the soy spring is one way. So basically um, what you do is uh, you define the behavior and you kind of apply that to, for example, um, the x direction, y direction, z direction, you know, uh, deflection, x deflection, y deflection, z, like dx, y, z, and also the moment x, y, z. So basically, uh, for example, if we have a compression only behavior defined for the, for the lateral movement of the, you know, like the soil on your piles, then you, know, you may define compression only property and apply that to, for example, like dx and dy degrees of freedom on the pile node. And for example, if you have um, like a nonlinear, like multilinear pile spring, you know, based on the PY curve, um, and if you want to apply that to, for example, um, I, I guess pile, you know, I, I guess earlier compression only on the wall and then the multilinear uh, spring on the pile. Then you can uh, connect the multilinear function that you define to uh, the springs that are assigned to uh, the nodes on the pile. And uh, uh, the other way, you know, if you have a compression only behavior, you may assign it to, uh, for example, like dx, you know, one direction against uh, the wall node, you know. Um, so, you, I mean, the behavior you define it and you just uh, correspond it with the. You know, appropriate um, direction. So yes, you can have uh, different stiffness, uh, you know, like depending on the direction, you know, active or passive lateral pressure, yeah. Okay, thank you, Angela. Um, okay, I think if that answers your question, Cyrus, um, I mean, if that doesn't answer it, you can definitely elaborate more in the question box. Uh, but we're going to move on to the next question. So what is this model used for? Design of the integral abutment only. Do you take the moment um, and shear from Midas and perform the design checks outside? So so this model, I think um, the, main, the main use of this model is to do the design check of the gel shaft. So uh, since, since this bridge you now is a is a is a common bridge. The bridge length is only 126 feet, and there are no skew. So so the soil strike direction um, has a very limited effect on the design of the integral abutment. I I demonstrated in this um, uh, the presentation because I just want to to show how to define the soil strike direction of the integral abutment when you have a demand to do the analysis. And also, um, and for gel shot, uh, uh, however, I, I didn't use it to, you know, to do an like independent design check for the gel shots. So as I, as I said, I, use, I designed the gel shot using the simplified method, you know, which the company with the South Dakota in the practice. And so I use them, the the MIDAS using defining the soil stress interaction to uh, to do a design check to see 
to check the strength and um, also to the displacement of the gel shafts and to check the, to make sure the design maybe is within the limit. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and then question number five is, can you do soil structure interaction analysis with stage uh, stage construction in the same model? Uh, yes, I think for, for this bridge, um, I think when you do, you, especially when you need to do like the soil structure interaction analysis for like, um, a composite, like a pre-stress gutter bridge or something like that, maybe you can you do it with the stage analysis. Is is there an effective way of doing a similar analysis used with a two D model? Uh, I think there. Are for yeah, I know for the abutment you have a different um, methods. Now you can either like what I did to define the the soil stream property, or you can just um, no, use a, a node uh, in a to, to define a, um, like a linear node to, to, to define the, um, the passive earth pressure be, behind the abutment. Okay. And I. Yeah, Ling, are you okay with time, by the way? or? Yeah. Like, um, are you okay if you keep going, or are you running out of time? Uh, I'll, I'll try to answer the questions, but maybe I know. <laughs> okay, um, no worries. No, I, if, as long as it's okay with you, um, otherwise we can just kind of send them to you via email, and then you can answer them. Okay. You know, on time. Mm -hmm. Also, um, the the pros and the cons. I I haven't uh, I haven't come here. <laughs> I think okay, no, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, how deep do you go with the soil strength? Can you assume a point of fixity? So for as I said in meta stable, you don't need to define the point of fixity. You now you can as deep as you you need. I, I think so, but normally the pi the pi length of a pi is like no no longer than two hundred feet. So I think the, of course you can you can do it in meta and the the another question um, is the back wall modeled as the plate elements or beams. So I use the plate elements, but I but I think you can also use like a three D beam. And for question number nine, for the bottom of the piles, did you use? Um, I think yes, I I did use the um, complete like compression tension like the spring. Oh, it's the separation. Uh, for the abutment, I uh, just use the compression tension spring, and it, it, it I think uh, um, Angela just answered this question. I think. Okay, yeah, that would be fine. And then I'll just send you the rest via email. Yeah, and so for seismic, uh, I didn't consider a seismic node in this design. So I think, yeah, you, you, you can consider a seismic node, but, uh, yeah, but in this project, I didn't consider a seismic node. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Henley. We do have, I think, a couple more questions, but just because we're running out of time right now, I'll just send them over to you via email. Um, okay, good. Just get get them back to me whenever you get the chance. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, just as a last note for you guys, um, any of you who aren't aware of it, we are currently having a special promotion right now. Uh, whether you're a new user or not a user at all, you can save up to 30% off and we will also provide free additional seats along with a free GTS NX or FEA NX license um, as long as training uh, and a whole bunch more. So if you guys are interested, please feel free to join, to either visit uh, the links on the screen or email us at grow at mitosoft.com.
Thank you guys so much for joining again and have a great day. Thank you so much, Yanling. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.